Uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the committee, uh, it is my pleasure to be here with you as invited to give a brief, brief account of the COVID-19 intervention funds, as well as relief materials relief received and distributed by my ministry. Distinguished chairman and members, as we are aware, the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development was created in 2019 with a mandate to develop humanitarian policies and provide effective coordination of national and international humanitarian interventions. Well, at the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. President directed the Nigerian Customs Services uh, to release to the ministry food and related items seized for eventual distribution to the vulnerable citizens as a palliative measure. And below is a brief summary of our activities while the details are captured in the report submitted. The non-monetary donations and distribution of disaster relief, the ministry received major food and non-food items, relief materials from the Nigerian Customs Service, as I mentioned, and others, and the distribution of the items which was widespread was given to the state governments according to Mr. President's directives. The incidences during the NSAS protests, however, made the ministry to consider dealing with NGOs in the subsequent distribution of these palliatives. Appendixes A and B in the main presentation before you give details of these allocations and their distribution during this period up to 1st March 2021. For the COVID-19 Intervention Fund allocation and utilization, the ministry was allocated the sum of 551,416,000 Naira for COVID-19 interventions in the 2020 appropriation. This sum has been utilized for various interventions as captured in tables 2.1 and 2.2 on pages four and five of our presentation. In addition, the sum of 2 billion and 457 million 500 thousand naira only was released to the ministry in respect of the COVID-19 rapid response. And this is part of the allocation of 32 billion 457 million allocated for which the sum of 30 billion is yet to be released. This sum, as mentioned earlier, is meant for the payment of the sum of 5,000 Naira each to 1 million vulnerable urban and peri-urban uh, individuals for six months. And the summary of these releases is as per table 2.3 and 2.4 on page 5 of the main presentation. On the modified National Homegrown School Feeding Program, in an effort to ensure continued response during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Ministry experimented with the modified school feeding programs, whereby food was tailored to be provided to households with children in benefiting schools. And this experiment was conducted in FCT Lagos and Ogun states. However, in view of some challenges, this has to be suspended pending review. The summary of household covered is captured on page eight of the main uh, presentation. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman and members, it is imperative to remind this honorable and distinguished committee that since COVID-19 activities are still ongoing, the ministry is consistently devising ways to ensure delivery of palliatives to the most vulnerable groups at all times. And uh, I must also mention here that 
during that uh, COVID intervention, Mr. President also directed that 70,000 uh, metric tons of grains be given to the Ministry by Ministry of Agriculture for onward distribution to the poor and vulnerable across the country. This was also uh, distributed and handed over to the state governments for onward distribution. Mr. Chairman, we shall also appreciate any suggested input that will ensure our activities are hit free and successful. Thank you very much for the question. Honorable Minister and uh, DG, um, this is more of comment and a recommendation to the minister and the DG on the way forward in dealing with this unfortunate situation that we find ourselves. I wish uh, the, the, the chairman who is the SGF of the uh, COVID-19 intervention is here himself so that we'll put our heads together in order to resolve some of the challenges we are facing. As representative of the people who are bombarded with the fact that you are not doing enough. But how much is enough? And um, I just have a little figure here of what I experienced personally. I know that NEMA and uh, the humanitarian ministry uh, they are in every state distributing relief materials, but it's grossly inadequate. Grossly inadequate in the sense that it is not that you are not doing much. But let me give you one example. In Goza, where I come from, we went one day with what you gave the Borno State Government and what NEMA put together. One day, we distributed 30 trucks of assorted grains to 18,000 house, 18, households. Then I tentatively put that cost at 20,000 per bag. That means we distributed 600 in every truck times 30. That gives you, I think, 18,000, right? So if you cost that at 20,000, in Borno State local government with 27 local governments with several towns. Honorable Minister, what I'm trying to drive through is that what you are having and what you are doing is not enough. So what is the solution? The solution is to make the Nigerian public know that you cannot feed Nigerians. You cannot be handing out what will take Nigerians through. What the government needs to do, which is not in your purview, but you are a member of the Executive Council, is to bring back peace to everywhere. And that is to say, take care of the issue of insurgency in the Northeast, the banditry, and now the succession problems that we are facing in, 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 in Southwest and uh, uh, and southeast, because the issue of insurgency, which we have just discussed, the banditry activities, the communal clashes, and other natural disasters have displaced so many people. Recently in Benue, you have more displacement. Oh, okay. Okay. So the chairman is reminding me. To, to concentrate on COVID. Honestly, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I honestly, I didn't know that I have to separate the two. So anyway, even if it is COVID now, let us say it is not humanitarian activities, but for COVID-related intervention, which you cannot separate the two. Because with the coming of COVID, these activities are going on there. In fact, the COVID caps it all. That means you cannot move. You don't have the freedom of movement. So I don't know how you can separate uh, the two, Mr. Chairman. But as you said, 
What I'm talking about is whether it's COVID, whether it's insurgency, it is humanitarian. The humanitarian intervention in these places should be looked at more holistically and more realistically. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished uh, members, um, let me start with the observation and recommendations being made by the distinguished Senator Ali Ujume. Uh, distinguished Senator, I quite agree with you. Uh, we've done our best uh, under the circumstances, and uh, but because of the huge number of people that are in need of support, it's really very impossible to be able to reach all. And the reason being that we have limited resources at our disposal, uh, so we cannot be able to reach to all the poor and vulnerable people in this country. Uh, and really, it, it, is in, it is meant for the poor and vulnerable, not for everybody, but even for the poor and vulnerable. Is grossly inadequate. We, we, we cannot do that. But we hope that we we'll do continue to do our best to reach to those that are in dire need uh, of support. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, thank you for your kind words, and I will convey this to the Chairman of the PTF. And thank you for all the support. Yes, not possible to touch everyone in the state, but. We we'll continue to do no matter how little uh, we can do. It's better than not doing anything. Uh, on the homegrown school feeding program, uh, this was a directive by His Excellency, Mr. President, as part of the intervention to cushion the effect of the pandemic, because as at then, there was lockdown, schools were closed, there was restriction on movement, parents cannot go out to and their uh, daily uh, uh, living. And so in Mr. President's wisdom, he said we should continue to feed even while they are in school. And he directed that we should discuss with the Nigerian Governors Forum where these schools are domiciled in their state to come up with the best uh, modality on how to, to reach out to these children. And we agreed to come up with the dry home uh, distribution, school uh, dry, dry home food ration to do homes where these children come from. These children have a home, and we have the data of these homes in the schools where these children are. Also using the data from SUBEB, that's how we came up with the addresses of these children. And we also use the UN um, formula of an average uh, six, uh, fa uh, six per family where we decided, okay, let's take like three children in a home. And based on that, we did the arithmetic and took this um, food ration to the identified uh, families, or homes where these children come from. But I agree with you, being the first time that we are you know, implementing this kind of intervention, there are bound to be gaps and we have learned lessons and that's why we only did the pilot in FCT, Lagos, and Ogun states. And uh, we hope that there won't be lockdown and we'll continue with the normal school feeding, and that was exactly uh, what we did. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on your question about the IDPs and the persons living with disabilities, yes, they were given special consideration because uh, at the advent of the uh, pandemic, uh, the first people that we reach out to were the people in the IDPs and people living with disabilities. We gave them that special consideration and in each state that we took these uh, relief items, we make sure that we tell the, the, the state authorities to also capture people living with disabilities and IDPs. For the IDPs, in addition to what we normally give them uh, monthly, the food, food, uh, food uh, ration, Mr. President also directed that we should give two months uh, advance uh, food uh, relief to these uh, ITPs, which was carried out by NEMA. And so we gave a really special consideration. Even the food items that we collected from uh, customs, we made sure that ITPs 
uh, with the official IDPs, Mr. Chairman, because we cannot also reach out to all the IDPs in this country for those that we do not have uh, really their, their data. On the victim support uh, funds, uh, it's, definitely, it's, it's not under my ministry. It's not domiciled in the Ministry of Human Trade and Affairs, and I really do not know where these funds are really, honestly. This is my humble submission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Food grants from the strategic, uh, National Strategic uh, Food Reserve was also a directive by Mr. President that the Ministry of Agriculture should release 70,000 metric tons, and which was what we used to distribute to the states uh, across the country. And these are mainly grains, uh, millet, uh, guinea corn, and maize. Do you have maize? And then gari to some extent, and gari. So, and this we did, and it's in the submission presented by NEMA. Oral Minister, you know, we, the point I all right, my, my, my other question related to, to this uh, COVID, uh, the handling of uh, people in IDP, IDP camps, and also, you know, our, our other, you know, people, the, the disabled people, you know, are they specially, you know, handled or they are generally handled? And if they are uh, specifically handled, how are they being handled? Did they, were they handled under the, the, the commission just established or separately? So I see it's important, you know, uh, because they are also very important members of our society. So we need to know how they, they, they are handled. Um, the, the other issue I want to find out, if, you know, the, uh, the victim support fund is, you know, is directly under the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs Supervision, or is under SGF. Uh, so I think these are, are important so that we will know, you know, how, how to bring them in uh, into other issues relating to, you know, just COVID and other issues. These are basically my, my comments. Uh, uh, after you have responded, then, you know, uh, I will make a final, you know, uh, a statement on the appearance of or the non appearance of the SGF. Honorable Minister, I have maybe it's just suggestion again too. One is just to uh, anchor and emphasize on uh, the suggestion made by the Vice Chairman. It's very, very important. Uh, one of the federal government project was done recently and it as it now as it now stands out as one of the most effective. This seven seven four. 744 this public works was done and based based on local government uh, it was done on local government basis in collaboration with the state of course the state nominated those that are going to be in charge by the time they did that in terms of recruiting 1000 per local government uh, i think they have achieved almost 90% success uh, that is to further emphasize and support what uh, the chairman, the vice chairman said. Then, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to use this opportunity to talk about uh, the organization under your supervision, and you are not here. I'm very, very passionate about Northeast Development Commission. This is supposed to be something that we discuss under AOB, but because Mr. Chairman, I have to leave, I want to just uh, speak with the minister. Please help us make sure that Northeast Development Commission does not turn out to be Niger Delta Development Commission. With all due respect to the Vice Chairman. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me. Thank you, Senator. Uh, well, uh, th uh, thank you very much, my, my colleagues. You know, um, uh, let me at this uh, point, since there are no other issues to raise, no uh, any other comments. Let me, at this point in time, you know, uh, indicate, you know, the displeasure of the Senate that the Secretary to the Government of the Federation will ignore the invitation to appear, you know, for interactive session, you know, on the issue of COVID. Uh, we have communicated to, to him. 
we have uh, reminded them, yet there is no representation and no appearance of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation. I think, you know, uh, it is a displeasure from the Senate uh, to, to, to take that kind of, you know, uh, action. Uh, because the basis of the interaction would have been, you know, uh, the paper presented by the SGF so that we can uh, work on the linkages, you know, uh, to see how, how effectively this thing, you know, has been done. But be as uh, it may, we will still, you know, uh, uh, contact the SGF once again and then uh, uh, invite him. And uh, at, uh, at future time, you know, uh, whatever date, you know, we are able to get him, we will still invite, you know, the Honorable Minister and then, you know, uh, NEMA uh, to appear side by side with the Secretary of the Government of the Federation. Uh, at this at this uh, uh, at this point in time, since there are no other comments, let me call on the adjournment. Who is moving? I'm here. I move Okay. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and distinguished okay, so members. So this meeting is uh, is called of you know synodal.